Hey, what's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Hope you guys are enjoying your Saturday. Um, you guys, please go ahead and hit the like button. Also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and share. Um, oh, man, just wanted to talk to you guys. I got came across a clip about Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club. So we, I think a lot of you guys, if you know anything about Angela Yee, she has her own show now. I think it's called Way Up with Angela Yee. And she was on the Tamron Hall show saying that she was like the only woman or the only female on the breakfast club team. Like as far as the producers and all that, they were all men and everybody on the team were men and she was the only woman. So, which is not true. Of course, we all know that they do have some women, some female producers and there, there are a few women on the team, but she was making it sound like she was the only woman on the team. And it was like a toxic environment for her. So go ahead and take a listen to this. And this is Fawcett Media. He he covered it. Um, so shout out to Fawcett Media. Fair use, fair use. And let's go ahead and get into it. Angela Yee attempted to throw DJ Envy and Charlemagne under the bus. But boy, she got a rude awakening. Let's take a look. The lone woman on this show with a lot of bravado, with a lot of edge, disruptive, and that's why millions of people love the show. It seemed to me that people were always riding you. Yeah, and you know, I was the only woman who worked there too. I mean, when it came to producers, camera people, and it wasn't an easy room for me I to didn't be know in. that. So I feel like I did need more like backup, you know, because even things that I felt as a woman, it is, comp you know, if somebody can't understand your point of view because they're not coming from where you come from, and so that was hard for me too, to be the only woman there with nobody to be like, check somebody, you know, you shouldn't have said that like that. It's just me. And there were times I did do that behind the scenes because you know, we should be able to do that. That's part of what it is. I'm not always gonna agree, but it's hard when nobody's like, you know what, she's right. Or let's all have a conversation about this. It's just kind of like, you say what you say and then. Well, you heard what she said. The good thing is DJ Envy, at least, has been on a full-throated defense strategy, PR strategy, to get the truth out into the open. Because if you listen to that clip, you would think Angela Yee was a lone woman on an island of misogynistic men who were just hoping to, to, to tear and destroy, and she was the poor damsel in distress that was getting all the flack for everything they did. That just wasn't the case. And this, this is dangerous because not only did she throw them under the bus, but she attempted to do harm to them. She attempted to do harm to them because it's damage to their reputation. And honestly, if she's not careful, you know, there could be legal implications on how they would respond it gives me every indication that the 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 exit and just her getting promoted to her own show and you know there being a a brotherhood and and, and love between them for having all these years of success it doesn't exist that was a shot that was too far dj envy got way out in front of this He's been the most. Charlemagne's been pretty quiet on it for some reason, because I know I know she was definitely mad at Charlemagne, so I guess Charlemagne doesn't want to make it anyway. And that's kind of that's real dirty and underhanded for her to do that. Even though, if you guys anybody followed the Breakfast Club, I used to listen to them, but I haven't listened to the Breakfast Club in about a year now. Um, I used to listen because of this. It depends on what guests they would have on. I would listen to them, you know, just to see what they guests say. Sometimes they had some, you know, pretty inter pretty interesting guests. But as far as just listening to the Breakfast Club to listen to them, I never really, cause they they got they that Charlemagne and Envy used to do some cringe stuff, man. They jokes were, they used to play that that you know that LGBTQ stuff on each other all the time, and it just got kind of you know I don't know why they they thought it was funny, but eh, to play to be a radio station, I don't anyway. But yeah, um, but yeah, like I said, they um. A lot of them had a, some back and forth, like Angela Yee and Charlemagne for a while was at it. Envy and Angela Yee was kind of at it for a minute. It's like they had like a, it was times where you could feel it on the show that they weren't really vibing. You know, they had like, 
some type of deal to where they weren't really feeling each other there for a while. But all right, let's get back to the rest of this. Worse, but yeah, you got to be careful with who you have around you, guys. Especially in a work environment, you thinking it's one way. You thinking we all good, and when they get out of there, they're kicking dirt on your name. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was. I mean, it was her, Charlamagne, and myself, so she was the only woman on air. But uh, behind the scenes, there was so many different. I mean, our boss, the actual person that pays our bills, pays our checks, and hires us, Steve Mitchell. I came from the university graduate, by the way. There's a bunch of women there. I think she just spoke. I think Warren's been taken out of, uh, of and I guess, technicality. I'm sure she's cleaning it up, but there's a lot of women that work on the show. I mean, so, He's even making excuses for her in, in the explanation. That last part, that last part is particularly telling. As he said, if you do some foul stuff, if you say some foul stuff about me, I can say some foul stuff back. So he at least receives the fact that it was some foul stuff that was said on Tamron Hall, of all places, you know. So yeah, listen, as much pandering as Charlemagne does to women, and there he, is no defense, guys. And he does. <laughs> Charlemagne panders a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, they even had some bad things to say about um, Kevin Samuels, I believe. You know, you know. So yeah, you can't. All three of them together was you. Sh you could have. You. I mean, it does. I mean, it. It kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense that when Angela Yee left, that she would say something about them, because. To be honest with you, you can you can't turn your back on either one of them. <laughs> you cannot turn your back on neither one of them. So, yeah. There is no defense to this. One allegation. This this isn't even on the level of a Bill Cosby allegation. And it can damage your bag. It can damage your career. You hear me? It's like she walked out the door and threw a match behind her. Yeah. So, but you know what? What was good is that everybody started kind of chiming in on their experiences with Angela Yee, their history with Angela Yee, the history with the Breakfast Club, and like tried to figure it out because, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense to a lot of people. And so she got a lot of flack in the comments. She, she, she had to turn off her mentions last weekend <laughs> and hide even in the comment of this video it says i hate when women do stuff like this dj envy was trying to make excuses for her but no you've been on that show for over a decade and now you want to act like you didn't have a voice now you want to act like you was the only woman and had no backup people were letting her have it and even some celebrities that had been on the show were letting her know that she was wrong for the, doing that so she had to do a little, she had to do a little bit of um, explaining. This was her response on her show, Way Up. I, it never blew up like this before, I guess, but maybe it was the way that I said it. I'm not sure, you know, but I guess people were interpreting it to mean that I meant that there were no women working on the show and that was not my intention. Right, so right, right. not to make anybody feel like, you know, there, cause that's simply not true. I was talking about in that studio, in that room, and even Sydney would tell you, I'll walk out that room and be like, oh, I can't be in here for now. And I would even say, when I But isn't that anybody with a job? When you're done doing your job, there is some relief, right? Right, 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 right. But somehow that's just because there was men in the room. 
just because she was the only woman in the room, according to her, even though there's plenty of women around. <laughs> and she literally said there wasn't any women producers. And Charlemagne proved her wrong on that. He's like Taylor, Taylor, who we know, who she's a personality on all of Charlemagne's podcast. He's like, Taylor's been here like seven years. Like, what are you talking about? There's not any women in the room? She's like, oh, Angela says Taylor was in another room. <laughs> leave the show i don't even want to talk to any guys that's why i had lip service with right. all women because right, right. i was like oh i can't talk to any guy but taylor was still part of the crew even though of course taylor not gonna be in the room with them as they're doing the show but as a producer taylor i remember taylor would sometimes be out you might see her in the hallway sometimes she would walk in they would call taylor in the room to ask for something but yeah of course taylor taylor is not going to be in the room right when they're doing a the damn show come on angela you for like two hours and i feel like i've said that on many interviews but somehow but wait a minute she goes on lip service and interviews rappers <laughs> exactly so you're talking to guys all the time i don't know uh, this yeah this wasn't until this time. wasn't the first time i've heard you say it were you surprised that it became a, a yes <laughs> <laughs> i was definitely surprised but you know I, one thing i did do and i advise this to anybody when something happens because this has happened to me countless times mm -hmm. you know just don't stay on social media because you don't want to be i it never blew up like this before i guess but maybe it was so though she couches it as a slip of the tongue an error the damage could have been really bad for Charlemagne and DJ Envy. But what isn't lost on me, what isn't lost on me is the fact that what The Breakfast Club is and how it became popular and how you get to the position that you're in to have your own program, to have your own show on iHeartMedia is because of the controversy. So you're happy to take the benefits of said controversy. You're happy to have Charlemagne sniffing women's seats. <laughs> he you're did. happy to have Charlemagne making those memorable moments. You're happy to have DJ Envy pretty much push you along all throughout the process. And you're happy to sit along and take the benefit of being in a room full of men, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable because there's there should be a, a bit of grace that's taken because that, they were the number one radio show for a long time. I don't know where they stand right now, but you don't get there by accident and you don't get there without hard work and sacrifice. You're thinking you're taking all the brunt of all the things Charlemagne literally almost got his head knocked off in front of the radio station. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, it seems like she wants all the reward and none of the risk. She should be able to look back on the Breakfast Club for the great thing that it was for her and for her career and leave it at that. She hasn't been out a month and she's already talking about how she was a victim. <laughs> if you like this video, like comment subscribe hit the bell notification. all right yeah but angela Yee, when she was on i mean breakfast club they i mean she participated in a lot of the nonsense they did too so especially like i said with charlemagne sniffing people's seats you know just stupid stuff like that and i think charlemagne would all Char charlemagne one time brought in a bus like a, a, a bust of his butt <laughs> and gave it to envy I mean, they did stupid stuff like that. And a lot of this stuff got overboard. They went too far. I think they went a little bit too far with it. You know, like like Corey Holcomb would say, they did a lot of fruit booty stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They A lot of fruit booty, innuendo, in, innuendos and stuff like that. You know, it was just, it was just craziness. And I think that it just got a little bit out of hand. They did too much. They did it too, too much. You know what I mean? It was like an ongoing thing like almost every day every every time you turned it on they that's what they're talking about or you know what i mean or making reference to each other doing some type of you know like i say core what core hogan would say fruit booty stuff so but yeah y'all tell me what you think about this video um drop some comments down below please hit the like button share and subscribe and you guys i'll see you in the next one please be good to yourself by all means be good to one another and I will see you 
in the next one. Peace out and have a good weekend.